Buffalo Chicken Rangoon. I was tasked to come up with a Super Bowl snack and I saw that crab rangoons had been making their way around the social media space. And while I do have nothing but love for a classic crab rangoon, I wanted to do something a little bit different and slightly spicier. We're gonna start with shredding a poached chicken breast. It doesn't have to be poached, just fully cooked. I've done it with grilled chicken and you can even just bring home a rotisserie chicken from the store if you want. Shred it with a fork or let it cool and pull it with your hands. And then to a bowl, add a block of cream cheese, some cayenne pepper, a cup of Frank's Red Hot, and a few tablespoons of a hot sauce that is actually spicy. I also liberally sprinkled it with some extra hot slap ya mama before bringing it all together in a blender to mix it. After a little taste test, it still needed a little extra something, which I decided would be black pepper and some cumin, which I just manually mixed in afterwards. The wonton wraps that I got from the store were way too big, so I just cut them into quarters. The wraps that you want to get are the ones that are specifically made for egg rolls, simply because those wrappers were made with frying in mind. Now what you want to do is take some of the rangoon and simply put it in the middle of the wrap, pat it down into a nice tight little ball, and then bring all of the corners of the wrap right into the the middle so that it forms kind of a pyramid shape. Wetting all sides of the rangoon will help you achieve this so that you can get a proper seal when you press everything together. But watch my hands while I do this. It's easiest to bring all four corners together first and then work on sealing the sides as you go down. And getting an airtight seal isn't really a priority here because this isn't the type of filling that breaks down in the oil as you fry it. It isn't the easiest dumpling fold to do, but the reason why I like this one is because it can hold way more filling than any of the other folds. Because the chicken itself is just so much more substantial than the fake crab meat that you use for crab rangoon, I wanted to make something that you had to eat in more than one bite. Also, these shapes sit nicely, neatly flat, so if you wanted to bake a whole bunch of these as a batch for a party or air fry them, they can sit neatly at the bottom and cook evenly all together as a result. You can also just fold it into a triangle and call it a f***ing day. I am not trying to run your life. I mean, look at that. That took so much less time. And then all you have to do is toss it in the fryer until it's golden brown and it's done. You don't have to wait for the inside to cook because it's already all cooked. Wrapping dumplings is definitely an exercise and some kind of meditation. It took me like an hour to make all of these. And before when I ran my own studio, the night before service, I would just spend watching a couple of Netflix shows while making dumplings and wrapping them all by hand. It's pretty labor intensive, but the good thing about these is that they freeze beautifully and you can just toss them into the fryer from frozen and they'll be just as good as the day you made them. What you definitely want to do if you're going to freeze them though, is freeze them on a tray first. And once they're frozen all the way through, dust them with a little bit of flour and then stick them in a Ziploc bag so they don't take up as much freezer space. And whatever you do, do not allow frozen dumplings to thaw before cooking them because the water will seep into the wrapper and then make it all soggy and shapeless. Enlisting the help of a friend to do this with you is always good. You'll be surprised how much work gets done faster when you have an extra set of hands. One thing you might want to consider is perhaps throw a dumpling making party, which is basically obtaining some free labor under the guise of a social gathering. Just make sure that y'all make so many that there is no way that everybody wants to take everything home together and you're left with a lot of extra. And then finally, your last option is to have some kids and put those little shits to work. Because what the f do they have going on that is more important than providing food for their family? Now the tastiest and most decadent way to cook these rangoons is to deep fry them. Heat up some oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and dunk them in until they're golden brown and crunchy. You don't have to worry about whether or not the insides are cooked or not because as we said before, they are fully cooked. I didn't have any blue cheese dressing on me, which was an actual tragedy, but these things worked really well on ranch. And yes, I am plating these things as if it was an episode of Chef's Table because it just seemed like the most chaotic neutral thing to do. Having a creamy element like blue cheese or ranch provides a really nice counterbalance to the tangy spiciness of the rangoon itself. And I also recommend playing with the different types of hot sauces that you can use when making the filling. When it comes to buffalo sauce, Frank's is obviously non-negotiable, but you can also supplement it like I did with the chipotle and habanero Tabasco sauce. Now cooking batch after batch after batch of these for something like a big party might be a little tedious. So I did a little test to see if you could air fry them and you totally could, 350 degrees for nine minutes. And since air fryers are just high powered convection ovens, 375 degrees in a high fan convection for 10 minutes should do the trick as well.